Starbase has made it to the end of its 2022 launch drought. Dragon may be used to save some stranded cosmonauts. Starlink sort of begins receiving upgrades to its network, and 2023 is going to be lit with Merlin magic right out of the gate, brah. I'm Kevin, and this is the last sode of SpaceX in the news for the year. The holiday season is always pretty slow concerning Starship updates, this year especially, but really this is the calm before the storm that 2023 has in store for us with Starship orbital launch attempts. So frankly, I'm trying to soak up this more relaxed dead period while it lasts. Booster 7 and Starship 24 are still expected to make the first launch attempt to orbit, possibly as early as January now if all the pre-launch tests that remain go well. Said booster is expected to make a return to the pad soon for all of that, including a much anticipated static fire with all 33 of its Raptor 2 engines participating. And while its test regimen is coming to an end, its upgraded grandmother, B9, just entered the gauntlet when it conducted its own initial cryo test last week. And on Thursday this week, she was tested for a second time, first partially filling up its lower locks tank, detanking, then taking the rest of the evening to top off the upper methane tank. As of the recording of this video, Highway 4 is expected to close today as well, so keep an eye on that Padres cams. A New York Times journalist who was gifted the very rare opportunity to sit in on the Crew-5 launch and mission control, as well as the Starlink mission that occurred seven hours later, and the aborted Intel sat attempt a day after that, used the experience to, in part, promptly throw shade at Elon in his article because he clearly doesn't agree with Elon's politics. This is the New York Times, after all. You know, I do love how NASA, a taxpayer-funded agency, is free to spout Marxist nonsense like equity, but Elon calling out groomers and defending free speech on social media that he owns is taboo. Wankers. I put the free link to this article below in the description so you can read his experience for yourself. The only thing worth noting here is that SpaceX's Benji Reed told the author, quote, Mars will require the company to launch multiple times a day, every day, all the time. What people have to understand is that it takes a lot to get there, and we're not anywhere close yet. Most of you have probably heard that a few weeks ago on December 14th, Russia's Soyuz capsule, currently docked to the International Space Station, sprung a leak in a coolant line that regulates the cabin temperature. No specific cause has yet been identified. Two cosmonauts and one American astronaut used the ship to come aboard the ISS in March, and it is supposed to return them to Earth in early 2023. But who really knows if Roscosmos can't figure out the cause of the leak and fix it? The cabin would just get too hot for humans after the hatch closes. So the Eastern European agency is looking into the possibility of firing up a rescue Soyuz. However, Reuters and CNBC published an article noting how NASA is also considering or simply toying with the idea of using one of SpaceX's Dragon capsules as a lifeboat for the passengers of the shipwrecked spacecraft. Quoting Sandra Jones, NASA spokeswoman, Reuters writes, We have asked SpaceX a few questions on their capability to return additional crew members on Dragon if necessary, but that is not our prime focus at this time. It wasn't specifically stated if SpaceX would find a way to make room on Endurance, the Dragon spacecraft already docked to the station, or just launch an empty capsule. Not to brag, but I've done the latter many times on Kerbal. Easy day. On Wednesday morning, SpaceX launched the last Starlink flock of the year from Slick 40 at the Cape to low Earth orbit for their upgraded network which created confusion among the fan base. Nobody outside the company was sure if new Gen 2 satellites were on board or not, given the company's own statements on their website and recent government filings insinuating there could be. However, it was soon deduced during the live stream that these were more of the same 1.5 versions being sent to a Group 5 orbit meant for version 2s. Elon tweeted the other month that while Gen 2 satellites are meant to be launched on Starship given their hefty size, Falcon could manage it as well, but obviously with fewer numbers than the fairing. This was the 11th mission for this first stage of the rocket, landing out at sea on a shortfall of Gravitas despite all the chop. It marked the company's 60th launch of 2022, which is what Elon said they were aiming for earlier in the year. Nicely done, gents. Elon also announced that Iran is approaching 100 active Starlinks, which of course is currently experiencing revolution over the nation's hostile mask mandates, the kind to appease Mohammed, not Fauci. For months, SpaceX has been smuggling user terminals into the country and microwave boxes and other household packaging, according to the Wall Street Journal. And this was done in response to the Iranian government censoring websites and shutting down internet access in some areas to stop the protests. I also find it ironic how our own government is working with SpaceX to do these nice things for the Iranian people after the Twitter files have confirmed the Fed's own involvement with censorship against American citizens domestically during the pandemic in the 2020 election. Just this morning, SpaceX launched their last mission for the year, this time a Falcon 9 from the West Coast for Eero C3, an intelligence gathering satellite for an Israeli company. And I did the calculus for you. It brought the total launch count up to 61 for 2022. The sat was deployed successfully about 15 minutes after liftoff, and this was the 11th flight for this booster as well, marking the 160th overall recovery for the company. Landing leg deployed.
With the end comes new beginnings, and 2023 is looking ripe for the licking, the cloud licking. Several Falcon 9 launches are currently slated for January, not including a long overdue Falcon Heavy mission for the Space Force on the 10th. Well, that's all for today. I appreciate all you for stopping by to see me, especially my eccentric members who support the channel. Just a reminder, we do have new Starship merch on the Bonfire store. I put a link in the description below. But most importantly, have a nominal 2023. Be safe out there this weekend. Don't do anything I would do. And until Friday next year, Godspeed.